Hey everyone, welcome to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay, and it's time to paint along. So grab a brush, grab some paints, grab some models, and let's get some work done, you know? Let's rid the world of unpainted gray models, and uh, yeah, get some work done, it's good. I'm continuing my High February Painting Challenge, but of course, uh, there, you know, I'm still on the gargoyles from last week. The gargoyles are a bit of a, a model that takes a lot of painting for a little point cost, because there's wings, there's the body, everything so we'll keep painting everything today uh, i've gotten some progress done since last week which you'll see but uh yeah let's keep going hey everyone so i'm back and let's keep painting the wings basically that's where i'm at right now with these gargoyles and painting all the wings at the same time i have about half a dozen uh guys left to paint the base color on the wings which i'm using uh, xv88 for and i think i dropped my xv88 paint which would not be good. Let's see if I can find it. So, yeah, things are good. Oh, there's right there. So, things are good so far. Uh, February's flying along. Valentine's Day is Saturday. But uh, my wife and I really aren't celebrating. I'll probably pick her up a little something or, you know, not too much. But we're, we're not really celebrating Valentine's Day this year because we both have to work at our other jobs. Um, we to make sure that we don't lose that much money when we go to Vegas. We're working some extra hours, you know, makes sense. And so we're both working Valentine's Day, but it's okay. We're spending a bit of a vacation time together next week when we go to Vegas for the Vegas Open for me. And uh, my wife actually has a c conference as well, so it's really good timing. And yeah, so it's gonna be fun, really fun. I. Uh, can't wait. I'm the only thing that's been really stressful lately is I'm trying to not lose videos, right? Because I'm I'm gonna be gone for a little, few days and yeah, so I have to get myself ahead on videos. So I'm busting my butt and filming a bunch of videos, working really crazily, and hopefully all of the videos get on time. Like my goal is that next week uh, and the week after. And for, basically from then on, but it's going to suck as I lose a little bit of time as well. But uh, I want to just videos up eight, every day at 8 o'clock, 8 a.m., you know, just a video obviously pops up and, you know, consistently. I'm going to try to do that for next week. That every day at 8 a.m., you can, in our Eastern Standard Time, uh, the new video will pop up and it'll just be good, you know. Uh, battle report. Uh, next week I won't have time to film a battle report. Uh, I do have a battle report coming up tomorrow, so that's why I'm painting up these gargoyles. I would really like to, if I get as, as long as I get them decent looking, which should be the wings alone, like, even if I don't finish the wings, um, they should be battle report alone worthy, you know? I really want to try using gargoyles in a battle report and see how they are. I haven't played them in 7th edition. I haven't even played them really much since the 6th edition codex came out. Because that's kind of when they kind of nerfed gargoyles for no real reason. They weren't really an overused choice. Um, but I want to play them. So I'm about, this is a battle report tomorrow. Uh, I don't know what my opponent's bringing. I'm guessing either Chaos Space Marines or Imperial Guard. But uh, I've been playing a lot of Grey Knights lately. And... Yeah. So... I'm going to try some Tyranids. Tyranids and Dark... Well, this week, at least, there are two battle reports up. Um, one in for free and one in the warp. And what my wife and I did was we... Uh, I set up a table, basically. Uh, Grey Knights versus Dark Angels. And if you haven't seen the battle report, yet, go check it out. And we played one for free. and one, Sorry, one in the free section and one in the warp. And we'll, we switched armies between them. So one of them I'm playing Dark Angels and I'm against Grey Knights. That one ended up in the warp. And one of them, I'm Grey Knights up against Dark Angels. But identical lists, same game. We just had a good time. And uh, it was fun. I got to put this week's painting tutorial, which uh, isn't on me actually at the moment. It's in the battle report room because uh, it was done in battle report. It was uh, this week's painting tutorial, which as you see, it is a Castigator Knight Lancer. It looks fun. Its name's Harley Quinn. As you see, it's modeling, you know what I'm talking about. So I have now an Imperial Knight Castigator and an Imperial Knight Lancer, and they were both in the battle report. So the Dark Angels had the Lancer, 
and the Grey Knights had the Castigator. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I'm not going to mention who wins or anything, but... Yeah. My wife rolls insanely well. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. Especially her stomp moves. Now we did forget, we got, we kind of forgot stomp. I forgot, totally forgot stomp the first couple rounds in the free content. Um, we both forgot. Like I mentioned at the beginning that they have stomp and then I forgot. You know, just I'm learning the rules. I only had the Titans in two or three battle reports so far. Uh, then we remembered and then, yeah, it didn't really affect the game too much in one of them. In the warp one, you'll see. I'm not, I'm not ruining anything, but uh, the free content, you know. The thing is about stomp against Paladins with Feel No Pain is um, it doesn't really have much effect unless you roll a 6. If you roll a 6, then they're just toast. But if you roll a 1 or 2 through 5, then uh, they get D, you know, D3, sorry, then they get D6 hits against them. You wound on 2s, but they have a 2-up armor save with Feel No Pain. You're not killing many. You know? So, if you roll a 1, nothing happens. But, uh, what else? Um, yeah, so I've been just busy working hard, getting videos done. So that way, when I go away for a few days, I can, I'm not behind when I get back. That's gonna be cool. Catching up with the WGC people. I've been talking to them the last few days, so a bunch of them are going to be there. So it'll be cool. And uh, plus Vegas, it's just going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to go see Penn and Teller, which is going to be really cool. I've always wanted to see Penn and Teller in uh, on stage. So that'll be really, really cool to see them. And we got amazing tickets. Um, and yeah, I just don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of the time. I guess Las Vegas open and maybe gamble a little bit, not too much. So, yeah, I'm going to have a good time. Good time. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be weird. I haven't seen my, like, it'll be a weird going a few days without my animals. But, uh, everything will be great. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to film a painting with Jay in the next couple days. Um, maybe tonight, I don't know, we'll see. But I'll, fin I'll film another painting with Jay, so that way we can still paint together next week. Because next Thursday I will probably be on my way to Vegas. Maybe Friday. Depending on what time zone you're in. So, or I may just not have enough time to film the painting with Jay. It'll be crazy. Um, and then the following painting with Jay, I'll be back for a while from Vegas and I'll talk about, you know, the Vegas open, how to go and the fun times I had. Of course, I can't talk about that much because whatever happens stays there, right? Yeah. It was cool at Decathlon just announced their big guest this year. Last year it was Graham McNeil. This year it's Andy Chambers, so that's cool. He's done a lot of stuff for 40k, and then he's kind of moved on from 40k and done a bunch of other things. So that'll be cool. Maybe I'll get to meet him. Um, yeah. I'm excited to try out some gargoyles on the battlefield. I don't know how well they're going to do, but uh, they're fast attack, 
so I don't use that much fast attack, especially with Tyranids. Well, I don't use fast attack much with any army, to be honest. Um, out of all the models I have, the best fast attack, my favorite fast attack choices are Scarabs. And yeah, Scarabs are by far my favorite fast attack that I have. Um, for Dark Angels, I do have access to Ravenwing. But if I'm using Ravenwing, I wouldn't use them as fast attack. I would use them as um, troops. Because if you're going to have Ravenwing, you want them to be scoring, right? Because then they have uh, Objective Secured. And that with Ravenwing is pretty sweet. Because you can literally just, if your opponent has anything but a troop on an objective, you just turbo boost right on top of the objective and take it away from them. If you need it, if you need to, and just go. Oh, objective secured. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and <laughs> put him back down on his base. The only downside to gargoyles is just moving them all on these little bases. I don't want. I'm not a big fan of the flyer bit of the jump jump bases. No, because they always come separate like that, and then you're like, oh, we'll move them around. So. good it's snowing outside and it's been the month of snow it's just been it's been a very snow filled winter so far um, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not against snow I like snow and I said if you don't like snow don't live in Canada or at least don't live in Ontario or certain provinces get more snow than others I if you live in Vancouver you've probably never seen snow because it rains there all the time but no snow but uh, I love snow. I just, I pulled my back a pretty harsh um, last week while shoveling the driveway. So that sucked. And uh, for my job, I for here, I find, you know, I'm hunched over a lot for painting and for editing. and So it's not really good on my back. But... Uh, <laughs> this is only the third time I've ever been on a plane or at least like you know to and from the place so that'll be fun I'm excited to fly there it's a five hour flight from here to Vegas but because the time zone changes it's only you know two hours so I'm not bad there I'll be pretty tired but it's all good I should definitely vlog. I'm going to vlog it at least a bit, what I'm doing in Vegas. And that way, it'll be fun to make some videos on it. Talk about my fun times at the WGC. Mm -hmm. And then I get back, and then like three weeks later is Adepticon. So that's crazy. So my my March November paint my March painting challenge will probably be just continuing with my Tyranids, but I'll also be getting all my uh, whatever army I'm bringing to Adepticon. I'm going to focus on them for maybe a week, because that way I can get them all back into looking nice and stuff. For, uh, for heading to Chicago. It'll be cool. And what else? Yeah. Life's good. No complaints. I'm a little bit tired of winter. So heading to the, the desert will have its benefits. A few days in the desert. Then I'll come back and I'll be like, it's freezing. Uh, what else? This week's How to Play 40k should be up by now. I've been having really bad luck with rendering lately. Um, the battle report for the warp. Um, I had to render it two nights ago, and but my power went out. What was it? My power went out probably when it was like 80% done again. We've been occasionally having power outages at night, maybe because of all the snow and stuff. 
but it really annoys me because I do most of my big, all my big rendering from my big videos overnight because that way I can actually use my computer during the day. And so I render overnight and then these power outages keep happening. And so to, you know, yesterday I got up and I expected to have a finished battle report and for the warp and I didn't. So I had to re-render it again last night, overnight, and today it's okay. So. so that's good at least. Second time's a charm. I didn't have to re-edit it or anything, it just, uh, it was still saved. I was saved, of course, before I render, so it wasn't that, you know, I didn't have to edit it again, I just had to re-render. Rendering is just annoyingly long. One of the comments from last week, someone suggested I reinstall my operating system, which I should do. I should back up my computer and then reinstall and clean it up. That would be a good suggestion, maybe to speed it up. I only use my, my one computer basically for rendering. I keep my other one for my fun stuff. And, well, I do play games as well, but not much. I'm not a big gamer. I'm out of brown paint, so I gotta remix some paint. Yeah, a couple more sets of wings, and yay, then done for now. Then the next step. It'll be a lot of fun to use these guys in a battle report. Like I said, I'm probably gonna play maybe a Flyrant tomorrow. A Flyrant and uh, some Gargoyles. The problem right now I'm having with Tyranids, I don't like using Double Force Organ stuff like that right now. I just want to keep things simple. I like to keep things simple in my battle reports. But uh, it was fun. The, the last This week's battle reports had Cypher and Titans in it, so it was kind of cool. But For uh, Tyranids, right? My biggest problem is the Elite section. It's just like, oh my goodness. I, haven't, I don't even have uh, usable Zoanthropes yet, so I haven't used Zoanthropes with their new Psychic Powers. Or the new Psychic Power, I mean, from the one guy. Um, but I have... You know, the problem is, I don't know what my opponents bring. I don't tailor or anything, because I, you know, but I want to keep relatively, you know... I like to have a good match up. You know, I don't list Taylor, but I really love it when we have a similar level of difficulty for armies, because then it leads to a really good battle report. It's not just one army walks over the other. And uh, so the problem is, for most armies, like, you've got to bring Venom Thropes, because Venom Thropes are the only cover you'll ever get, you know, with Tyranids. You need Venom Thropes to give Shrouded. Shrouded keeps squads alive, because... Uh, it really deters your opponent from firing. All you gotta do is have one, a couple models in front of, you know, like if uh, the gargoyles in front and they don't fire on the gargoyles, and hormigons behind the gargoyles have venom ropes near them, they have a three up cover save for being fired, you know, firing through models plus shrouded equals three up. And a lot of the time it will deter an opponent for firing weapons at a squad with a 3-up cover save to kill a 6 or a 5-point model, you know? Probably a 6-point model, I guess. Or maybe an 8-point model. But, you know, how much firepower? If you have to fire 3 shots to wound, you know, 3 wounds for every 1 dead Hormigant. So it's a good... Know, it's a really good system to keep your guys alive, and it, it really does deter your opponents because they'll be like, "Oh, you know." The biggest problem with horm with venom tropes is that, well, as a tyranid player, it's I know how to deal with tyranids because you just pick apart whatever you want to do, like you focus on either the synapse to take out, you know, their big creatures, and then their other things are just falling apart. Or you focus on their cover saves, or both. You know, like, if you see Venom Thropes and you have an option for them, like, uh, the second you can get them in a straight shot, so they only have a 5-up cover, take it. And 
wipe them off the board because you take away the cover save and Tyranids are like, oh, you know. Or Synapse, right? You just take away their big Synapse creatures. And many lists these days only have, you know, have a few Synapse creatures in a list. I like to run Warriors for that exact reason because Warriors themselves are Synapse creatures. So they, um, they really keep, you know, your guys in, in check because otherwise your Hormagons kill themselves and your Termagons run into cover and, uh, yeah, you know. Uh, still, I obviously the best HQ is the Tyrant with Wings, and I, I probably argue two sets of Twinlink Devourers is the best option with Wings, because it just flies from the battlefield, you keep it flying, and it just shoots everything with Strength 6 shots, but Strength 6 is, is surprisingly strong, because if you can get behind a vehicle, you hit it from behind, most vehicles are rear 10, and then you're hitting with, you know, 12 shots, statistically you'll hit with like 9 of them, no, even more than 9. Uh, what is it? Two thirds hit the first round, which is eight of them. So you almost hit with like ten of them, essentially. And then you get a few pens, and you pop a vehicle, or it's just squads. You just you know dack of them, and even terminators will fail a couple saves, and you're in good shape. Hmm. You are. So I love fly rents. I don't ever run a double fly rent list because that I see is a little not I'd say it's a little cheesy for battle reports. You know, if I was taking if I was going to a tournament and I was bringing Tyranids, yeah, I'd probably bring a double fly rent. If I wanted to have a competitive list because two fly rents, uh, your opponent really can't just focus on one and not they'll have to focus on one at a time and knock it out of the water. But if you get lucky and one of your flyers has um, if it gets catalyst, you catalyst one flyer with the other flyer, and then both of your you know both of your hive tyrants have feel no pain. And there's no real shooting that has instant death that you have to worry about when flying around. So well, there's very little at least, you know, because you can't target them with blast templates so that'll definitely keep them alive for a little bit <laughs> maybe I should try the death leaper tomorrow hmm, let me think about that one maybe death leaper would be fun to try out tomorrow too and I guess he would be cool with Moloch, because if you keep him alive, Moloch comes in. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I should do Death Leaper as well. Death Leaper would be fun tomorrow. Death Leaper, Exocrine, a um, bunch of models that I've been painting up for the last couple months. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, Exocrine. Uh, for Luckily, by the time this is posted, my opponent and I will already played. Uh, he, yeah, he's a great guy anyway. He wouldn't list Taylor against me anyway. But uh, what else? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll bring the Death Leaper, a Flyrant. The HQs for troop for elites. Ooh, that's the question I always debate about. Should I bring five venomthropes or three venomthropes and six hive guard? Because six hive guard will pack a punch. Probably maybe six hive guard for troops. Some garg uh, gargoyles, hormigons, and warriors. 
And then fast attack gargoyles. See, I wonder if this is an expensive list already. I'll have to double check this list because it's getting pretty expensive. And then Molochs and an Exocrine for heavy. Mol they're like they're pretty they're the like the cheapest H heavy support choices. So there's not that much points in them, but I only play at fifteen hundred points for battle reports. People always wonder as well why I play specifically at fifteen hundred. And as many wargaming would tell you as well, fifteen hundred is kind of a sweet spot for battle reports. Um, anything more than fifteen hundred, you go into really long times. Like you think it's really weird, but fifteen hundred will take three to four hours sometimes. If it's a fast game, two and a half. A slow game, three and a half maybe. But once you have those extra three hundred fifty points, it's probably just the options that people bring at that level. But it really ups the game to four hours plus. You know, and if you're playing 2,000 points, you will be there the whole day. Um, I've played 2,000 point games that have gone for a full six hours that, if you're filming, because the filming process alone slows it down. And then, um, yeah, it just, oh my goodness. And I just, you can't, it becomes this epic adventure, which is cool, but, um, if you're trying to film it, it just gets really, you know, crazy. So I like to play 1,500 points. That way, um, I can film in a decent time. 1,500 point games are good too. They're not, they're not imbalanced. Like it's definitely not in the a terrible game at 1,500. I, I actually like 1,500 points. It's a great game. For a good time. It tends to be more fast paced. Uh, you can't really bring as much cheese, I find, because you know that's th they, that's one of the things that people do with the extra three hundred fifty points between fifteen hundred and eighteen fifty is just start stacking things. <laughs> just making sure everyone's painted, because I remember seeing a couple areas that were missing on a few guys. Not him. Him. He had one missing. So I'm finishing base coating the wings, and then it is to shade. The wings and then start dry brushing. So it's gonna take me a while. This entire video will probably just be wings. I don't see myself finishing the wings even before the end of uh, this painting with Jay. And then probably the end of next painting with Jay, I'll be done the wings. Another half an hour. I really should contact uh, I was realizing I should probably contact David Men and see if they're going to go to Gen Con or Adepticon this year they mentioned last year that they were thinking of going to some conventions this year but uh, I haven't heard I occasionally watch their sit and talks and stuff and I haven't heard any talk about uh, either convention this year so It'd be cool to catch up with them. Of course, it'd be really funny to drive, you know, nine hours to catch up with them. When we live only four hours away. Or three and a half hours away. Alright, that should be good. Let's end there for the, the step. Now it's time to give these wings a quick shading. And for the shading, I'm going to use Reckland Flesh Shade. That way it adds some flesh tones. So a little bit of red in there with the... Uh, the brown leather, it's a great combination, I find. So let's get these guys. Who do I need to be done? He. Half washed. That's kind of odd. This guy got started, but didn't finish him. After this, I'm going to go shovel the driveway again <laughs> so that I can, you know, get out of the driveway. The plows are the worst part because the plows come so frequently on my street that they build this giant wall of like, and the problem is they, they grate, they like ground it, right? They, they're like right against the grounds. They, they scrape off all that extra hard ice. 
And so when they push it onto your driveway, it's this wall of ice. That's the hardest to move. Listen, can't really complain. You live in Canada, or even most places in the States, you know, you get snow. I was talking to someone the other day who doesn't really understand the conversion rate between Celsius and Fahrenheit, which most Canadians, you know, I'm going to say a lot of Canadians don't, right? Not, and same with Americans, you don't. Um, not all of us understand the, the because we're neighboring countries with pretty much no units of measurement in common. You know, they use miles per gallon. We have kilometers per liter. Um, Fahrenheit, Celsius. So, you know, inches. And we use, our actual, all of our legal measurements are in uh, kilograms and centimeters. Like, my driver's license says my weight in kilograms and my height in centimeters. So, but, uh, so I was talking to someone the other day who obviously I don't think understood the conversion rate. And she was telling me that when she was in Vegas the other day, it was around 55. I said, oh. You know, 55 uh, Fahrenheit, I'm guessing. And she said, no, Celsius. I was like, 55 Celsius? Are, are you sure? And then for some reason she thought it was getting colder, so I said it was around 26, and she goes, none of that should be Fahrenheit. I said, so if it's 26 degrees Fahrenheit in Nevada, that would put it at approximately minus 3 uh, in Celsius, so that's snowing. That's that's you know freezing. That's below freezing because freezing, uh, s freezing Fahrenheit is thirty two. And she got really confused, and then she told me that she thought it was fifty five degrees in January in Nevada Celsius. I said, well, I don't think that's. I I don't mean to be rude or anything, but I don't think that's correct because fifty five is like a hundred and thirty. Uh, and. I don't think, even more than 130, it's almost 140, um, and I don't think it's melting your skin, like that would burn off your skin if you're there for more than, if you're outside for more than like 20 minutes, and I don't think it would be that hot in Nevada in, in uh, January, you know, maybe if you're sitting on the hottest rock in the hottest area in the summer, yeah. It could be very, very hot, but I don't know. And the woman kept fighting with me, the person I was talking to. It was funny. I said, you know, it's just Fahrenheit to Celsius, or sorry, Celsius to Fahrenheit is 9 fifths plus 32. So, and then we had a weird discussion that, because uh, I, I have a bit of a math background, I can calculate off the top of my head the, the, um, the degree in which they're equal. Because there is a, a set degree where Celsius and Fahrenheit are the same number. Because any equation, right, 9 fifths, or sorry, 9 fifths x plus 32, you just each set equal to x and you solve it algebraically. And you get 100, minus 40, sorry, not 100, minus 40. So for future reference, in case anyone ever asks you the temperature in which Celsius and Fahrenheit are equal, it is minus 40 degrees. Minus 40 degrees Celsius equals minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason being is 9 fifths plus 32. Um, the 9 fifths equals 32. Right? So 9 fifths of minus 40 equals minus 32, or sorry, minus 82, or my 70, sorry, 72, what am I doing? Math, see, as I said. 9 fifths 40 is minus 72 plus 32 is minus 40 so math lessons with Jay doo -doo 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 -doo. the more you know <laughs> but as you guys can see I've, I've actually been really good lately with battle report opponents my wife isn't playing anymore with me as well but I've been scheduling more and more battle report opponents it's getting to the point now where I've, I'm gonna, I've 
played against several guys that just love to keep playing against me because they, they have a good time. You know, people, I think people really do enjoy playing against me in battle reports because they know that I, A, I'm not the most cutthroat person. Any time, most people have really good experiences playing battle reports against me. So, you know, so I think they just want to keep playing. So it's good. And tomorrow I'm playing in Stu. Uh, he and I had a game where I played, it was my first time using the Dread Knights against him. And he had uh, Chaos Space Marines. That's why I think tomorrow it might be Chaos Space Marines. But I know he's a huge Imperial Guard fan as well. Slash Astro Militarum. And so maybe in a, the only problem is Tyranids versus Imperial Guard. Uh, wow, that's not a good matchup for Tyranids. Because, oh, you know. You know. Tyranids are not the best at popping vehicles. So as I said about Hive Guard are awesome. But with Hive Guard, then you're not taking two squads of Venom's ropes. And all that firepower, you need cover saves to keep your guys alive. So, but that's when Moloch comes in. You know, they can just pop up underneath and shred some stuff. Because they hit side armor, I believe. Pretty sure they hit side armor. Keeps opening and closing. So that'll be good. Mm -hmm. And as I said, the next should be out by now. Uh, the next How to Play 40K, the psychic phase. Um, my goal is to have all three filmed this week for the month. That way I can put out one for the next two weeks as well as this week. So the next three are going to be, uh, this one's the second phase, the next one is the shooting phase, and then the following one will be about the shooting, movement and shooting of vehicles. Because they, I, they're so different, and they're the hardest for people to remember. Because every vehicle can move a different distance, you know, and fire a different amount of guns at a different ballistic skill, and then there's power of the machine spirit. So I wanted to separate vehicles from normal shooting or normal movement, because that way I can discuss it all in one topic, and after, especially it's, it becomes especially important after I've covered shooting itself, because at that point then all the new people will know what snapshot is, um, you know. And then the assault phase is is relatively easy because um, there's not you know well other than explaining the formula for hitting like the weapon skill table is kind of a it's not a joke but it's kind of arbitrary right i've been doing the um i have a series called face off in my in the warp it's a fun series i really love it it's basically we just we put two close combat really hard hitting dudes against each other and see who wins and um, in face off the more you do it the more you realize how just completely arbitrary weapon skill is because one of the guys who's been in some more recent videos is um, the avatar of Cain and it's like I have weapon skill 10 and it's like alright so you're hitting everything on threes but every all the other close combat you know hitting hard hitting guys that we've been using they're all weapon skill 5 or above you know there's very few really solid close co combat hitting dudes that are weapon skill four and lower there used to be the old uh the old lore overlord used to be really good before they took away mind shackle and and everything but uh yeah so it's just like okay so i'm hitting on fours you know it's just arbitrary versus actual you know an increase in ballistic skill directly correlates to easier shots and an increase in weapon skill really doesn't a lot of the time. Especially if it's from like 5 to 6. Because most of the time you're not against other 5s. You're up against 4s or below or high ones, 6s and above. So, yeah. These guys are going to look good eventually. But they are three color minimum already, right? So that's not too bad. They're going to look pretty good for the battle report tomorrow. Yeah. 
And probably beforehand, I might film the next painting with Jay. So that way, um, that way they can look even better. They're a little bit closer to finish. Because what I have after this, I'm going to do the tail part and the, the nails red in my usual red fashion that I do for my tyrants. And then I'm going to do their, well, the tongues and, and gums as well red. And then the gun. So these are one of the, there's some models in 40K that just have an un, um, and this is a lot in War Machine. War Machine Hordes, be prepared. If you are a War Machine or Hordes player, like there's a one point model a lot of the time or half a point model that will take you hours to paint. There's so, so many of them because they have quasi good detail on them, but they're worth nothing in the game. So it's like, oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, in, in 40K, there's a but there's some models that just, oh my goodness, it takes you forever for an eight point model or something. And these are one of them. Um, for, as far as vehicles go, the, the one for me that's the most painting time per, uh, per worth is a truck, orc trucks, because they're dirt cheap, but they have so much detail on them, but they're dirt cheap on the on the battlefield. And it'll take you hours upon hours to get a orc truck painted up to a decent standard. And uh, it doesn't necessarily correlate. Like, you know, I spent, the amount of time it took me to paint up Harley, the new uh, Lancer, It does you know, it was really not that much time for a 400 point model. A model that represents a quarter of your army list of 1,500 points. I could have probably spent an equal time on a truck. Hmm. So I actually have a lot of trucks. I have like five or six trucks that I need to paint up. I just haven't gotten the urge to paint them yet. If next time I do an orc painting challenge, that'll probably be one of them. All the trucks. I'll just have weeks of truck painting. You know. But uh, yeah, this painting challenge this month is not going to be a high points cost month for my painting challenge, but it will be a number of models. Because these, you know, I've painted two dozen, over tw two dozen uh, gargoyles alone. So if I have two dozen models less paint, or two dozen more painted up at the end of the month than I did at the beginning, awesome. And then maybe the last week I'll grab, you know, build something else like a harpy. Or the, the exocrine, and then build that up and paint it. That'd be cool. <laughs> no, no. Where did it go? Yeah, his base. Losing track of his bases. Do, 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 do. Not that many left to do the wash on or the shading, depending on what you use. Yeah, they're almost all done. So, so this week's painting tutorial is Harley Quinn. And uh, so I don't have the model here, but if you want to see it in action, check out the latest battle reports. Uh, the one's the warp, one's for free. And Harley Quinn takes on the Castigator and uh, the Grey Knights. And I intentionally put the Castigator on the Dark Angel side because I didn't want to stack the... I think the Castigator's better... Castigators are designed to kill Paladins, right? Uh, so are... Not Castigators. Uh, Lancers are designed to kill Paladins. And that's why I designed, put them on the Dark Angels. Because if I put them... If I, design, if I put the Lancer on the... Uh, the... Grey Knight side, it'd be way too imbalanced because then the Lancer would just pop Dark Angels like no one's business. And the Castigator relatively, rel um, because it's only strength 7, 8, 3, would do nothing to to, to, um, 
to paladins, right? Because they'd have two we- two wounds each, two up armor, five up feel no pain, because they're you always put an apothecary with the big squad and Yeah. <laughs> And I've decided because I can't film a, I can't film a battle report next week. I'm going to be too busy, you know, before I leave and when I'm there. So I'm going to decide because a lot of the warp people have been suggesting that I the warpeds I call them because that's the name for all my subscribers in the warp the warpeds. They've been uh, recommending that I put out episodes of Face Off every now and then just to show you what I one of the cool series I have in the warp. And I'm really proud of Face Off. It's a lot of fun. It is. I know it is similar to what Mini Wargaming calls Who Will Win. But I've been doing, um, I've actually been doing Face Off longer than they've been doing Who Will Win. So if you compare, if you uh, look at the dates of first published videos, I published my video two weeks before they put, published theirs. So I'm not copying. Um, I'm not claiming they're copying me either. I'm guessing we came up with the same idea at the same time because, you know, it's kind of cool. People always say, Who Would Win between these two? And I came up with the idea of Face Off because, I, as I said, it to me it symbolizes two. Um, people meeting in the middle of the rink, like um, like a face-off in hockey, and uh, but are, they're slightly different. Mine is purely close combat versus who will win, where it takes into consideration shooting as well. The only thing is with with who will win, which I again I I like to focus on the the assault because that's what seventh edition is kind of lacking to me is the assault phase. Um, is like who will win? You can jump in and out of combat. Versus uh, face off, they're just always in combat. You know, I've seen a couple cool wins where they just sit across the table from each other and shoot at each other, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's just not as interesting to me. You know, it might be more interesting to more people. Awesome. So, I'm going to show an episode for free, and it's going to be uh, Lysander versus the Avatar of Cain. Who is better in close combat? Or who will win in close combat. And I'm not going to ruin it for you. It's a close game. And it's going to be fun. And it's always best out of three. So. <laughs> Let's see. Who's, who's left? He's left. more. I think I have two left to put the shade on. Yeah, two left. Here and him. Him and him. Okay, so put him on the base. And the next step, yeah, I don't know if we're going to even get to it. Maybe. Maybe I'll start, you know, dry brushing a couple. But, uh, these gargoyles take enough time. But it's okay. As long as they get done, right? That's what matters. And when they're done, I gotta have gargoyles, and I don't have to paint any more gargoyles, and it's gonna be fun to use them in battle reports. That's the spirit of these painting challenges, you know? Excellent. Maybe I should give these guys devourers. That would be kind of cool. I'll go up 12 inches and light up your opponent. I don't know if they have access to devourers. I'll look at that. They make it really expensive, but hilarious. They probably don't have access. It's 25 guys, 75 shots. No, not bad. Half hit. Half wound. 
that's still like 18, yeah, like 18 wounds. Killing three Terminators. And then you salt. Another one done. Yeah, I might end up to this step. That way they're all in the same step. But it's all good. And yeah, we're about 50 minutes. It's been a good hour of painting. So my big question to you, people, I know it's a little greedy of a question, but um, do you... If you have anything that you think I should do, because I'm, I'm kind of a noob to traveling. I don't travel very often at all. I really don't. Um, I've left the country three times in the last five years. Two of the times w were last year's Adepticon and Gen Con. Right? So I'm, I'm kind of a noob. And anybody here who's been to Las Vegas, leave a comment in the comment section down below about what you think I should do in Vegas. Because apparently there's this really cool street called Fremont Street that people keep telling me about that I should go see where it's like a roof or something like there's like a, a ceiling and they project up onto the ceiling, but it's like a whole street and it's outside. So apparently that's cool. And also apparently it's easy to get pitpocketed or something, but uh, that'd be kind of cool to go there and see these cool streets. Uh, what else? I'm going to go see Penn and Teller. So that's the thing. I'm not going to go see Celine Dion. Hey, I'm Canadian. So I've already seen her 18 times in concert anyway. Just kidding. Um, and unfortunately, Weird Al starts his tour in Vegas a week after we're gone. It was like, oh, I told to go see Weird Al. And then, because I only have like a day to kill, really, and then I'll be in the Vegas Open as well. But and just in case, because um, I'm not going to just sit the entire time at the Vegas Open. I'm not bringing any armies, right? So I'm going to have a good time, but yeah. And of course, I should bring my video camera and film as much as I can. Yeah. So that's good stuff there. All right, and we're done. The shade is on. Um, it's no point really, yeah, we're 51 minutes into this. I'm probably gonna call it here because that step's done. It's gonna take a while to dry on some of them. I just started. So I'm gonna call it here and we'll continue on these guys next video where we are going to keep working on the uh, the gargoyles that are going to take forever. So thank you very much as always for watching this episode of Painting with Jay. I hope you got stuff done while I was jibber jabbering on about gargoyles and everything. Um, and if you're going to the Vegas Open next week, I'll see you there. Look for me. Come talk to me. You know, I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to meet you. Um, yeah, just have a good time. And uh, yeah, hope you got stuff done. And check out the battle reports with the Harley. And my big question to you all this week is if you've been to Vegas, Leave a comment in the comment section down below of what you think I should do. Because I've never been to Vegas and wonder what people should do in Vegas. Besides gamble, I guess. There's gambling. There's probably some good buffets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you very much for watching as always. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got stuff done. And uh, till next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting with Jay.